Yeah, I'm going to present uh, some results out of the Tristram project, which was already announced, which we carried out under the development of the sustainable land use sector between 2019 and 2020. So it's uh, almost three years ago. <clears throat> Why do we work on this transition strategy on vegetation management? Because I think that's a, a very, it, or it was, I have to say, a <clears throat> stepstone to more sustainability. As we have heard in the morning and in the afternoon as well, railways are facing major challenges to meet sustainability demands, as we have had in the discussion short before the break. We have had already heard that the United Nations have uh, decided to, uh, de do, to bring in sustainable development goals in, in total 17 SDGs and with 167 targets. And the European Commission respond to the environmental challenges as well. So the Green Deal, we have heard from ATEM in the morning, and it's a biodiversity strategy for 2030, where, for example, in the context of vegetation management, all users of pesticides are forced to reduce the amount and the risk out of the use of chemicals by 50% to 2030. So, in general, we say railways are a forerunner in global climate carbon, what we have heard also in the day today. But we are also aware of our impacts in, on biodiversity, meaning on nature, landscape, and natural habitats, as we have already seen in some of the uh, <clears throat> reports before. Therefore, the sector must engage activities forwards a cleaner, inexpensive, and healthier uh, transport, that meaning as well in the public part as well in the private part. So the main goal which we uh, discovered when we started with the project for the railways was avoid or at least to minimize the use of chemicals in vegetation control. And we identified several strategic, strategic actions like alternative methods, optimization of the herbicide use. We are discussing standards, application technologies, <clears throat> digital tools, and new contracts. And I will go to those points now more detail. The, there is a need to develop alternative or non camping methods, as we have heard in, uh, in the morning as well. So, because there are more and more areas coming where we are not allowed to use herbicides anymore, therefore we need alternatives. And uh, within the Tristan project, we, we based on results coming from the Herbie project, which was before, where we actually wanted to uh, engage the railways to look for alternative methods like, uh, for example, um, the electro reading, that is a picture you see in the upper right hand, and hot water, which is uh, in, in the right in the middle, because that were measures which seems to be very promising, like constructive measures, as you see in the picture on, on, on the very end. So uh, that's neat. There's need to a consequent development and, of course, also optimization and adaptation for this area. Uh, <clears throat> we need to focus on those developments. One point is uh, the optimization in the use of herbicides, which, of my personal opinion, must be still an option even in the future. Because as far as we see now, the application of herbicides will retain as important in the short and in the medium term. Just to give you an impression, for example, in Germany, we stopped using herbicides in the areas in the embankments in the middle of 90s and focused the herbicide application on the immediate track. That of course, uh, yield a reduction in uh, the quantities of herbicides, but there are also technical uh, possibilities to reduce uh, herbicides, for example, plant detection systems, 
especially for leaf herbicides, which detect the plant. And when there is plant, uh, when the plant is detected, the herbicide will be ap applicated. We started at least in Germany, for example, at the, begin at the beginning of the 21st, 20, 100th century, where you started with infrared detectors to uh, identify vegetation uh, in the track. Nowadays, the technology has developed, so every train, every spraying train is already <clears throat> uh, using a camera system, which is more, more comfortable and more precise in detecting vegetation. And besides the uh, spraying trains, also the two-way vehicles, which are also running on tracks, should be mounted with such kind of camera system. Standards is another point. As far as I can think, I started in the middle of 90s, last century, contracts were almost focused on the use of herbicides. And uh, I think there should be a change in our mind that we should uh, think about another uh, concept. Because in recent times, there was uh, the paradigm that we don't want to have any herbis, any, any vegetation or uh, in, in the track, meaning in the ballast area, for example. But if you look outside and when you are driving by train or traveling by train, you can see that not all the tracks are really free of vegetation and trains are also running, even there is vegetation. And that's why one should think about if this paradigm maybe has to change. If it's necessary, we should play, change it. But I think therefore it's also need to uh, uh, investigate what could happen if vegetation is occurring in th those areas. Another point uh, which we uh, discussed in very detail is a combination, not only using herbicides, we can also use the other ones I have shown, like uh, hot water, for example, or the electro weeding, which should be mounted on one carrier that makes it more flexible in the use on the tracks, for example, if you're coming to an area where you're not allowed to use herbicides, you can switch to the other technology without herbicides. And when you are leaving those areas, you can switch again back to herbicides, for example. This is more flexible to, uh, to work on the track. You do not need for every measure an own vehicle. Beside this, the technology has developed, robotic platforms are coming more and more into use, which also gives us a chance to apply those methods in the track or in the uh, track, track site area. Digital tools are also <clears throat> one very important option. Uh, looking back to the change from the 2000 to 2100 century. I remember that at Deutsche Bahn, we started uh, employing GIS systems, which also was mentioned uh, uh, in the morning, where we have had a database on which we can see where we have protected areas, which was very important to know for the planning process. <clears throat> and these GIS system combined with GPS systems on the train or on the two-way vehicles allowed a more precise and more uh, functional uh, application of herbicides or other methods. And on the other hand, you can use those data if you store it in a database for your further planning in the future. Because when you have a track, for example, where you haven't seen vegetation for a couple of years, which is documented through such a system, then you have the option to say, okay, then I stop uh, vegetation con measure control for uh, let's say two or three years. And when vegetation is occurring, then you start applicating a measure, whether it's herbicide or non-chemical method. On the other hand, this system allows you also a documentation for, uh, the, uh, for the authorities, for example. 
And one point is uh, the tender concepts, which are based on herbicides in the past. Mainly, I have to say, and um, at Deutsche Bahn, for example, we started, I think it's almost uh, six, six or seven years ago, where we were thinking about to split the tender into the chemical part for herbicide uh, application, which are the most focused on the big companies who are our service providers. And in a second, smaller part for those track areas where we are not allowed to use herbicides, we wanted to give a sign into the market that also smaller companies, which have non-chemical methods in charge, could be uh, working for, for us to, to uh, further development of new methods in the field of uh, alternative methods, because uh, as far as I can, or as far as I have seen, so I, I must say, um, the big service providers, they don't want to develop non-chemical methods because it's expensive, it's slow, and it's not efficient as we know it from, from herbicides. And I think if the, comp if the railway companies uh, bringing such new tender concept into the market, it would be a possibility to activate the whole market even for the non-chemical methods. So the future of vegetation control on rail track starts now, that's my opinion, and therefore I want to uh, say follow us if you are not following these actions, because we have to change, we have to change from a simple single method approach to a holistic approach to an integrated vegetation management on railway tracks. And our challenge is to progress the uh, vegetation management from a single method concept to an integrated method which combines herbicides beside non-chemical methods. And this new approach allows a treatment to be very fine-tuned to the needs of the track we found outside. So I would like to say a special thank to all the colleagues and the members who have supported the sustainable land use for this project. And uh, I would also like to say thank you for your <coughs> patience. Thank you.